Hey guys, Nikki here. Um, so I'm going to do a video that has been requested by a lot of people and for a long, long time. Um, it's a basic care video for corn snakes. And uh, before any of you haters start commenting um, very violently on my videos, um, please note that this is the way I keep corn snakes and this is the way I have been taught to keep corn snakes. And we have kept corn snakes for a long, long time this way. None of them has any health effects or mental effects or anything. They've grown up to be healthy, grown up to be very good weights and very good growth rate, weight rates. So, um, I'm not going to go around telling you that you're wrong. And I honestly think you shouldn't be telling me that I'm wrong because it's just different ways of, you know, if you don't disagree with me, then keep it to yourselves. Anyways, okay. So, uh, so what if you guys just got your corn snake? Let me just grab my corn snake here. We have Barry over here. This is my Paradox corn snake and currently my only corn snake. As you can tell, she's at a good weight. Very docile. Um, and you can tell she's about, she's about under a year, I'd say. Um, I'm not really sure because she was as I've heard that she was used to be underfed but anyways here we go paradox corn snake so what enclosure would you want to choose um most people would recommend maybe like a 10 gallon tank for a hatchling corn snake which is the size of a worm a lot smaller than um a lot a lot smaller than berry over here but um let's say for example a corn snake that's the same size as berry what enclosure would you want to put in recommended size I would give for you is actually a one foot by half foot plastic tub with a secure lid. So, <clears throat> uh, most of you wonder, oh my gosh, that's tiny, it's a tiny space, like people say you're supposed to have a 10 gallon tank for a baby, so why should you have such a small tank for a larger juvenile? Honestly, the thing that people don't realize um, is that snakes, they, in the wild, they always hide in their own little hide in their small confined space. So if you give them such a large enclosure, they're going to always wonder why your snake's always under the hide. Not because they like their hide, it's because they're afraid. Most of our customers actually come in complaining my snake's not eating or anything. I'm just like... Man, you have a corn snake. It's very rare to hear a corn snake that would refuse to eat when it's been eating very well in the shop. Turns out is that they give it such a large enclosure. The snake's scared. They're terrified. They're stressed for a long, long time, even after they supposedly adjust to their homes. And that's what happened. Um, another reason why I don't normally recommend hides is... Um, because I find that, well, this normally occurs to ball pythons, so corn snakes, I don't, you know, I'm not against hides. It's just personally, I don't use it. Um, not really for any particular reason, but also because, um, well, they're in a smaller enclosure. Their enclosure is their hide. So there's definitely not going to be any stress going on with them. They eat straight away, and there's not really a use for a hide, and they turn out all of them completely docile and friendly. So you have your tub here. Substrate that I normally recommend. Uh, most people say aspen or wood chips. That really is up to you. Um, it's just I normally would like to use paper towel because um, it's cleanest. Because um, when I started out keeping um, snakes, overall snakes, um, I use aspen or wood chips. And uh, what happened with that was that in a Take in mind, this is actually reptile aspen. Um, lots of them happen to have mite problems at, straight after that. So, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the production, but because the packages of aspen travel around so many where, like so many different places, you never know what got into those aspen. So, um, I think paper towel, the kitchen paper towel, is the cleanest and the easiest to take um, clean up. Lots of you always ask me, wow. Um, Nikki, you have such a large collection, how do you clean all of them? 
it's because I use paper towel. You, we use paper towel at the shop as well, which is very easy and very quick to clean. I'd say it only takes me maximum three hours to feed and clean all of my uh, collections every single week. So here you go. You got your paper towel. I just got a simple water dish here, but um, you know most people would recommend a big water dish, and I would too. It's just I don't. I'm currently washing my corn snakes one, so <laughs> I don't have anyone to demonstrate. But I'd give it a large water dish, large enough for your snake to soak in whenever it's about to shed. And the berry would come back over here. As you can see, that is plenty of space for a corn snake to grow, and it is a secure, small, yet not tight, confined space for it to have a healthy home. And there you have your secure lid, because every snake is an escape artist. Some are even better, but they all are. And here you go. You have your enclosure for a corn snake. If you would like a hide, and then imagine the big water dish in there. So, that is the basic enclosure side that I would say that is good for um, a corn snake. Now on to feeding. Um, I don't really feel like showing any live mice or rat pups right now because that would really make people uncomfortable. So I would say um, I currently feed Barry uh, one or two depending on how hungry she is or um, if she di if she's digesting well that week, uh, rat pups, because she's a female, so I am able to feed her two rat pups to be able to pump her up. Um, what else? Yeah, feeding uh, corn snakes, I reason why I recommend them as a beginner snake over ball pythons is because they're a lot less picky with feeding, and uh, that's what I find out of... Um, all the experiences dealing with thousands of corn snakes, thousands of ball pythons, it's always like this. Heating wise. So we got the humidity problem out of the way by putting in a large water dish. Some people would recommend spraying them, but I personally think a large water dish definitely saves your time. Um, because the water dish, not only is it for drinking, a large water dish is for them to soak in when they feel that they need a higher humidity or when they're shedding. Now let's talk about temperatures. I have two types of heat mats here to show you guys. One of them's the one of them's a basic Zoomed mat, and one of this one. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys won't see this because this is kind of like homemade sort of that got off some guy. But um, this is basically your perfect example of what the heat tape would normally be like, the flexi tape. So. Um, except for there's no clippers here. That's basically the clip for the whole thing. There's a dial here for you to adjust the heat. Personally, I would recommend the Zoomed a lot more. Reason why is because um, they tend to generate heat a lot better than these ones do. Um, the thing is, when I put this under the tank, I could feel the heat. But then I won't feel as much heat inside the tank when I'm touching the bottom of the tank. Whereas this one is thick enough in padding and would go right through and you'll actually feel the heat for the pad. So this is very good for any winter conditions. Um, depending on which country, which season, which um, state you live in, um, I'd say if you live somewhere like Toronto, which is where I'm from, during the winter you would definitely want a heat mat. Um, whereas if you live somewhere like Miami during the summers, you definitely, I don't think, Honestly, if you keep your snakes in your garage, in your living room, where there's not a lot of aircon space and it's not too cold there, they're definitely fine. Um, during the winter, it definitely would be best to have um, a heat mat, not only because it's good for your snake's health, um, they would eat properly during the winters and they won't tend to hibernate, as some people call it, as much. Um, they'll be going as normal and um, yeah, it's just to keep your snakes warm. So what you do is you put it on one side of your tank. Normally it's recommended that you put it, um, people normally on average would put two hides, if you really love hides, 
you would put two hides on each side and then the water bowl in the middle. You put one, like a heat mat, on one side under the hide so the snake can generate its um, heat going on which side, the cool side or the hotter side. So that's heat mats for your coin snakes. Um, shedding. Shedding as well. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Um, shedding. Um, if you have a large water dish for your snake, um, if you have, um, you know, if humidity's right, uh, your corn snake should be shedding perfectly. Um, Barry here, I can tell she's already sort of getting into shed because her color's kind of fading out already. But um, if you do have any trouble with your snakes shedding, you can get this Rupti Aid. Uh, Please ignore the $60 because that's in Hong Kong currency. But this is Shedding Aid Zoomed. It works perfectly. I use it on all my reptiles and this shed just comes right off nicely. And um, for handling with your corn snakes, I have seen some aggressive corn snakes, but it's actually very rare. Um, that mostly happens when their owners don't really interact with them ever since they were a baby and they still keep that defense mechanism in them um, without trusting humans. So handling your corn snakes. When you approach your snake in the tub, if your corn snake does not have the S shape and staring right wherever your hand's going, then you'll be fine. You gently touch it on the body and you pick it right up. A bad way to handle your snake is keep your palms straight. Because there are some people that come into the shop and they'll be like, Oh, can I hold that snake please? I'll be like, sure. I give it to them and they hold their palms straight like that and the snake just tends to tumble over and fall into the ground. So what you want to do is you want to grab hold of the snake. You know, let let them go where they want to go. But then you got to support their bodies. Sometimes they'll curl around you, just as how Barry is about to do on my hand, as you can see. She curls up her tail and she's just crawling around on my hand. But um, I tend to find that hatchlings don't really know how to do that, so if they do, they're really, really flighty, and you want to support them properly without obviously squeezing them too hard. So yeah, guys, I think that's about it for um, basic care on corn snakes. Um, oh, one last thing I would do want to mention, sorry, um, with heating, please, please, I beg of you, do not use a heat lamp. Many, many people have messaged me um, on heating problems, uh, whether or not they should use a heat lamp or a heat mat, or many customers actually come back in saying, hey, my ball python, my snake is burnt, half alive, it's bleeding like hell, what do I do? I ask them, what do you use as a heat source at home? And they say, a heat lamp. The thing is, people don't realize, if I could just show you, if Barry will demonstrate that again, how she climbs up there, you see that? She's climbing up there. Normally snakes, when no matter how big of an enclosure you give them, they'll always try to escape. And when they do escape, try to escape, they tend to go onto the edges on the top of your tanks. And uh, when they do, that's when your heat lamp's over here, and they scrape right across the heat lamp. For those of you who have kept other reptiles before, such as bearded dragon and stuff, you know what I'm talking about when I say the heat bulbs burn like hell. These heat lamps especially, um, this was a 100 watt one, so the 60, I don't know why I have these out, but okay. Um, even a 60 watt, just by human touching it, it will burn you. A 100 watt, I don't, I don't even know what's going to happen to your skin after that, not to mention 150. Well, obviously, I, I'm, I'm hoping that none of you would be using 100 or 150 watts for your snakes. Um, at most, maybe 40, but that would still definitely burn your snakes because they don't really know what's going on. And when they scrape around it for a long time, that's what happens when it burns your snake. So please, please, please do not use a heat lamp. That is an absolutely wrong thing to do. Your heat mat's the way to go. So yeah guys, I think that's about it for um, corn snakes, um, basic care. If you guys have any more questions, please comment or inbox me. Um, if you have a longer, if you have any situations 
um, that's going on with your corn snakes or if you have any detailed questions please inbox me so I can answer you detailedly specifically answer to your specific question questions that you cannot find on the internet and such that is the reason why my YouTube channel is here but anyways guys um, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later